I've seen trailers for Speak No Evil and Joker 2 so many times, I'm already sick of the films. Thankfully, for the case of Speak No Evil, the film is finally out and I was able to watch it. And now I'm sick of the movie for an entirely different reason. Let's talk about this in a spoiler-free review. Alright, so this movie- oh my gosh, Little Ant is here. Ant is the name of the boy in this movie that I'm talking about today. Ant, what's that, bud? He can't talk, so it's hard for me to understand. That's why it's called Speak No Evil. Okay, I think I understand. Thank you. Thank you, Ant. Piss off. Ant's telling me you should subscribe to the channel, Adam Does Movies. I post movie reviews, rants, roasts, live streams every single week. Would love to have you. Thanks, bud. Yep. The Daltons are on vacation, where they're going to meet up with another family and kind of hit it off over the weekend. So much so that when the Daltons get back to the States, they're going to soon get a postcard in the mail inviting them out to a quaint little house in Tuscany, where they can see that fun family once more. Blindly flying out of the country with your wife and child to a house you've never been at in a location you're not familiar with, with a family you barely know, is a bold move. I'm sure everything's going to work out great in the end. That's the premise of Speak No Evil, and if it sounds familiar, it's because this movie came out like two years ago. This is the American version, even though the other version is basically in English for 85% of the film. But this one promises a better ending, a more gripping story, and it's kind of the same film at the end of the day, but we have James McAvoy kind of doing his split routine here. He's crazy, he's unpredictable, he has those eyes that never meet yours, they're always looking up at your forehead like, <laughs> yeah, what am I gonna do? Hey friend, how's it going, friend? You should stay with us, friend! This is a thriller. It's rated R. It's just shy of two hours. It felt longer than two hours. I'm not gonna lie to you. The pacing's tedious. It takes its time. And there's definitely some tense moments where you're clenching that buttocks waiting for what's gonna happen next. The problem with this movie and movies of this ilk, think The Strangers Part 1 that came out not that long back. Fantastic film for someone. Not me. I hated that movie. This one, not quite as frustrating, but Again, I'm alluding to it. The problem is these people make so many stupid choices. There are so many red flags, it's hard to get over it. And there is a pivotal moment. I won't ruin what it is, but it takes place around the hour mark, maybe 45 minute mark, where it happens and I can't get on board. I'm done, I'm out. So anything after that is just completely off the rails for me. The character choices in this movie are so stupid, I was actively rooting for these people to die. If you're looking for kills, if you're looking for thrills, if you're looking for spills and chills, not really what's going on here. It's a slow build. We're unearthing the secrets of this family and what it means. Mackenzie Davis plays the wife, previously known for her role in Terminator Dark Fate, critically lauded, fan approved Dark Fate. She is an emoji come to life. Every facial expression is so over the top. There's moments where someone does something unsavory and she's like, Ugh! And she'll just hold the expression. It'll go from her going to the act taking place, back to her, to the act, back to her again. I half expected pearls to just appear out of nowhere that she could clutch. As for the kid actors, Agnes and Ant, I'm going to give them a shout out. They did a good job. I wasn't annoyed by them. Maybe annoyed by some of the things they do, but I wasn't annoyed by them. They were very good at kid actors can be a dangerous ball game. You can get some pretty cringe performances. Overall, these kids did a great job. As far as cringe performances, there's a lot of there's a lot of moments in this movie where I was I was tensing up quite a bit from some of the dialogue and just the scenes they're in. It's intentional though, so I'm not going to fault it. It's just everything about this movie is kind of uncomfortable to watch and not in the good way. James McAvoy, who has a stellar track record for playing great performances, not so much here. I found him to be way over the top in the role to the point where I don't know how anyone is sticking around this guy. He's a prick. He makes you feel uncomfortable. That works in a setting where, say, you're chained to a radiator and can't get away. But in this, these people can just get in their car and go. They choose not to. And it all comes down to the most frustrating aspect of the film, the father. Scoot McNary plays Ben Dalton, the biggest, uh, to use a tired phrase, cuckold I've ever seen in my life. There are weak men, and then there's Ben. This guy goes out of his way to make the worst choices and the least realistic ones to keep his family safe. When you make a movie like this, you can have characters that have weaknesses, of course you should, but typically they rise to the occasion. 
Ben never really grows over the film. He's always annoying. He's always obnoxious. Let's get into the superficial stuff. Music, there, ominous, not really doing... Oh, God, actually, you know what? Music, there are some songs that come up, some classics that uh, that might make you roll your eyes. The uh, Cotton Eye Joe sequence that goes on far too long, like most scenes in this movie, had me rolling my eyes to the back of my head. Visually, looks good, looks fine. I mean, it's 2024, I, I, I should hope so at this point. I don't think there was any jump scares, so I will give them props for that. Not that I like am bothered by jump scares, they can be fun when utilized appropriately. Here though, it was nice to not have them and just kind of be along for the ride. Now, do I think this movie's terrible? N not terrible. It just annoys the shit out of me because I could not get on board with this family and their stupid choices. If you're able to kind of look past the decisions and whatnot or just think, yeah, this family's dumb, that's fine. You, you might like this quite a bit, but for me, I can't get over that stuff. It's frustrating. It's a frustrating watch, not a fun what's going to happen next watch. I had to actually double check to make sure this was rated R because I don't remember anything really bloody or a lot of swearing, but me, it must have happened later on. There's not much here, okay? Most of the time it's just spinning its wheels. And I'm going to leave it at that. I will have a spoiler video breaking down this entire film and it's going to be a fun time. So if you want to hear that, it'll be a longer video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, Adam Does Movies. I post movie content every week multiple times would love to have you stick around i have a second channel it's newer i'm growing it it's very stupid and fun it's called adam does rants where i'm complaining about first world problems like crazy i recently had a haircut so there's a 20 minute video about me complaining about the entire haircut process in 2024 if you love what i'm doing super thanks are always appreciated or become a patron at patreon.com slash adam does movies there are hundreds of exclusive videos over there waiting for you begging, pleading for you to come over and show some support, and I would appreciate it. All right, see you next time.